Hey guys, how's it going? Sean here. And I wanted to talk about some of the thermal management issues I am having with my Traxxas Rustler. Now it hasn't overheated yet, but it's getting really hot and I'm actually stopping before it gets to that point. It's this motor and some of the drive components that get overheated. And there's three main reasons that I think that occurs. The first is airflow. So the air cannot actually flow through the body into the motor. You can see it's pretty well buried back here. And if you look at the front, there is no path for the air to get to. The second is because there's no heat sink on the motor. Now, if you look at the motor, it's not sunk and there's really no extended surface area to pull heat away. The third and final one is pretty minor, but there's a label around a large portion of this motor. And I think that's actually gonna drive a little bit of insulation and reduce its ability to shed heat through convection. So let's take a look it's some of my simulation software to see how much of an impact some of this may have and how we may improve it as well. Here we are with the results of the first simulation, which is just a baseline simulation to tell me uh, where the motor stands as is. So I have the motor and the label installed. I'm not looking at any other components. I need to point out this is a relative study, which means every study you see here is set up the exact same with the same uh, thermal loads but the only differences will be heat sinks or convective heat transfer coefficient as a result of airflow and i'll say when that's different but the thermal load itself is always the same so if we look at the baseline setup with the label we see a max temperature of about 187 and that's pretty high that's probably not too far off actually of some of the peaks that i'm seeing when my motor gets way too hot this is definitely not good i don't want to get there maybe a little bit higher than what i'm actually seeing because i usually shut it off pretty early but um, it's not too far off from reality. So let's take a look at what happens when we remove this label here. So here is my simulation that I'm gonna activate without the label. And we see that there's no label here. There's still a split line because I had to make this face different for some other simulation reasons. And the temperature drops, uh, what I guess about eight degrees, which really isn't too much. So it's going from 187 down to 179. So really wasn't a major change, but eight degrees is actually beneficial, so that helps. So now we know we're definitely taking this label off regardless. The other thing I mentioned was heat sinking it. So if we keep the exact same convective heat transfer coefficient and throw a heat sink on here, we can drop the temperature quite a bit. Now this gets down to 154 degrees, which is like 25 degree drop. Um, so that's very appreciable. So I definitely will get a lot of benefit out of this heat sink, and that's still assuming um, no improvements in airflow. So I've taken a look at some methods of improving the airflow. I'll go over those in a minute, but let's look at uh, how much of a benefit we get if we improve the airflow around the motor and increase our convective heat transfer coefficient. So this is the study that just finished, and if we activate it, we see our motor temperatures go way down. Um, below 120 here and that's because I've set the convective heat transfer coefficient to be consistent with forced convection on the low end so if anyone here is an engineer or has studied the field of heat transfer it's 25 watts per meter square degrees C for the baseline convective heat transfer coefficient under forced convection so we see a huge benefit now let me point out though, I only get this much cooling when the vehicle is moving forward at a decent rate. Um, the Traxxas motor itself also has a built-in fan that's supposed to blow air through, but that only works when the motor's running as well. The heat sink will always be pulling heat away faster, so this is probably the absolute best thing I can install on the unit itself without throwing a fan on there to constantly be driving forced convection. Now let's look at some ways that I can increase the flow, but first we're gonna start out by looking at the baseline flow. So let's jump into my flow software and see what we have starting out. If we take a look at the flow visualization around the Traxxas Rustler, we get a better feel for what's actually going on here. So you can see the majority of the flow is going over and around the actual Rustler which means very little airflow is getting to this motor. You can see here that there's a few stray flow vectors that get here, but they're all this blue color, and blue color means very low velocity. So the lower the velocity, the uh, closer to stagnant the air is, and the less heat it pulls away. 
Now another way we can look at this is a planar view to look at the velocity field here. So let's jump into a plane and take a look at how the actual flow velocity is. Now here's a good example. You can see that around the motor and pretty much everything within the underside of the body is a darker blue and that's going to indicate less heat is being pulled away. Now there's probably a reason Traxxas has done this hopefully and maybe it's just aesthetics or maybe they decided they didn't need it but what that means is your convective heat transfer is a lot slower than it would be if say you were in this region where you have your yellows and your reds because the airflow is really high and really fast. So basically what we need to do is find a way to get these blue regions where the motor and the batteries are to be closer to this green or yellow so that we're pulling more heat away as a result of convective heat transfer. Now let's look at a few ways to do that and see if we can improve on the heat flow for this actual model here. There's a few minor changes that we can make to really improve on the airflow condition um, and while this solves I'll go ahead and show you what I've done just to visualize what's going on. Now I cut a hole in this window so that air can actually enter through the front of the uh, rustler body and then I actually dammed off the rear side here to prevent this air from just going right out of the non-cooling side. And then I left a cutout here for where the motor is so that it forces the air to pass over the motor to draw as much heat away as possible. Now this isn't an abstract or um, unknown thing to do. If you actually look here you can see the side pods on like a Formula One car where they would actually do this to force air to flow around radiators or anything like that that needs uh, high speed cooling. So let's take a look and see how much benefit we get. Um, first we will go ahead and jump into our planar view because we just got through looking at that. And we're going to cut it right across the motor. I think that should do it. Now we've got enough of a solution to where we can at least start talking about it. So I'll be zooming in and out because it displays the body differently. Here is our body and you'll notice right here where our motor is, we're actually seeing some higher velocity flow and the resolution on this is going to continue to improve as it solves. So that's why it'll continue to get smoother. And also I want to point out that the scale here goes much higher. So in this um, light blue going on towards green region, we're actually nearing the max velocity on our prior simulation. So this is much, much faster than the other simulation that we ran, which means that these cutouts would work. Um, if we take a look and zoom in here, you can see all the high velocity air escaping out of the back exactly like we wanted it to. Now, if we scroll into the front side, you can see exactly how that air is going into the body right here, like you'd expect with the cutout. And if we look underneath, we can see that it's actually going in and kind of traveling down. So it would also work to cool the um, battery as well as the other electronics inside the body. Now let's jump into our streamline view and see what it looks like from just that little window opening. Okay, so you do see that as we get the air through the front of the car, it enters through this little hole. You can see it driving straight in there. And we get air passing through the inside of the cavity. Some of it goes around and that's because of the rear shock support here. But we do get a fair amount more of velocity vectors that go around and near this electric motor. Now it's still really turbulent air. You can see that while this looks good and it's gonna pull heat out right here, right in the middle where a large portion of the area is, is still going to be a lot of vortices and relatively low velocity. So it's still not perfect. There would be some work to fine tune this, but I think there's also other ways we can solve this heat problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other two options. If you recall, we had mentioned adding a heat sink. So I'm definitely going to do that because it did drop our temperatures about 25 degrees. But the other thing that I would like to do is improve the actual natural convection coefficient. And I can do that by cutting holes in top of the body. So if you look at where this electric motor sits right here, the natural convection current would bring heat right up in this region. And that's going to limit the ability of this motor to lose heat through natural convection. So it drops the convection coefficient a little bit. If I put just a few holes or slots in this region, I'm actually going to increase it just a little bit, maybe a 20% increase in the natural convection coefficient, 
which is going to help an appreciable amount based on some simulations I ran again. So let's look at the heat sink with a higher natural convection coefficient and let's look at the min max. So now I'm getting a maximum of 140 degrees Fahrenheit and if we compare that to the original results that's probably 15 degrees cooler so I'm very happy with this. Um, I think this is the route I'll go. So number one we're going to add this heat sink and the second thing we're going to do is cut some slots to improve the natural convection coefficient. Uh, that's it for this video. In the next video hopefully I'll have these parts in and I can show you how everything worked out and if we hit our targets.